Today, I'm going to show you how to perform a face swap, taking the image of one person and changing the face to that of a completely different person. And we're going to do this with two different tools here at Pixel Dojo. Now, pixeldojo.ai is a site that I created. It has access to over 20 generative AI image and video tools. It does have a monthly subscription associated with it, but a lot of these techniques you can also do on your own if you have high enough end hardware. With that out of the way, let's jump right in and get started. The first thing we're going to do is head on over to the dashboard. And now you've got this menu here that has all of the different tools that you have access to. Now to start with, what we're going to do is we're going to use something called image to image. So we're going to go to the transform tab and you'll see image to image right here. And it loads up right here in the center. Now I'm going to go ahead and collapse this main menu just so we've got a little bit more screen real estate to work with. But to give you sort of a layout of the land, over here on the right-hand side, you've got where you can upload an image from your computer, or you can go down here to the My Media section, and you can use an image that you've generated with one of the other tools like Flux or Google Image N3. You've got the Prompt section here, the number of images that you want to generate right under that, and then you've got a couple of different sliders, and then finally, add a custom LoRa. And that Laura is going to be really important here in a moment. We'll talk about that a bit more. So to get started, what we're going to do is we're just going to grab an image from my existing gallery. And let's just kind of scroll through and find something interesting. Now, I kind of like this one. I saw this one the other day. This is something I generated using Flux Redux. It was an image of my wife, and then I used Flux Redux, and it created this second version of it, which I thought was kind of cool. So this is our base image that we're going to use, but we want to swap the face on this person, and we want to swap it to Taylor Swift. So in order to do that, we're going to go to the My Laura's section, and Alora, just so we're all clear, Alora is a low-rank adaptation model. What it is, I know it's a fancy word, but what it does is it trains an AI image model to create pictures of any person, place, thing, or style. In this case, we're going to use a LoRa that was trained on images of Taylor Swift. And so we're going to scroll down, and there it is. Talk Swifty. <laughs> All right. So you can see we've got our custom LoRa over here, Taylor Swift, and we're, we're not changing any other defaults. You'll also notice that it automatically added a trigger word, talk Swifty. That's the trigger word that was trained for this LoRa. So this LoRa only activates when it uses this trigger word in your prompt. We're not going to do anything else though. We're just going to leave that and we're going to click on generate and we'll see what our result looks like. And there's our image. So as you can see, it has a really high resemblance to Taylor Swift, but it still captures that essence of that original image. She's wearing the same shirt, the same type of sweater. She has the same red lipstick, same background, everything else. So this is a really nice way of taking an image that you really like and then swapping the face to another character. Now, there's also a LoRa trainer here that uses Flux. And you can train images, you can train LoRas on anything. And I've got a lot of videos on that subject. So if you don't know how to do that, that's really easy to do, and it's included in your Pixel Dojo subscription. Now, there's also a public LoRa gallery. So if you go over and you open up the main menu, we can go to the community gallery, and we'll save this image, actually. I want to make sure that we've got this for later. You can go to the community gallery, and you'll see that there's images and models. You can click on models, and this is going to load up hundreds of different LoRa's that you can add to your account. So let's say we wanted to use Lex Friedman. We could click on Lex Friedman here and we can just say add to my models. It's added and that's all you have to do. Now when you go back into your account you can see this my custom models and you've got all of these different models now including Lex Friedman. So that's all you have to do. You don't necessarily have to train one of these of your own. You can just go to the community gallery, and if one exists, you can just grab that. So with that out of the way, let's look at the second method that we have of doing a face swap. So for this one, we're going to go down to the Enhance tab, 
and we're going to go to In Painting with Laura Support. In Painting allows you to sort of highlight or create a mask over an image and change one part of that image with something else. So that'll make a little bit more sense here. And you can see the layout of these tools is all very similar. I try to keep things consistent so that once you get the layout of the land and you kind of figure out how this works, it's easy to jump between tools. So what we can do is we can start with an image. In this case, I found an image of Sam Altman. He's a CEO of OpenAI. So we'll have a little fun with him here. And what you can do with this is you basically you paint over an area of the image. So you can see this brush tool here. You can take it, you can paint over the image. And so we'll just kind of mask over his face and his hair here. And what we're going to do is we're going to attempt to change his face into someone else's. And similar to before, we're going to use Allura to do that. So you can see we've masked over this. Now you can also, if you right click, you can drag the image around on the canvas. There are also some zoom controls. So you can zoom in, you can zoom out, and you can change the size of the brush. So you can make it larger or smaller if you wanted to get some really fine details in here. But for our use case, I think this will do just fine. Now you can see over here it has this add Laura. So we can go down to my Laura's again and I don't, let's try Lex Friedman since we just loaded him from the, the image gallery there. And we're not going to change anything else. It has his token prompt that's been added there. And you can see the Laura for Lex Friedman has been added. Let's just click generate, see what happens. All right, here's our first result. Not too bad. It looks a little bit like Lex Friedman, actually a lot more than it did originally. He's got that buzz hair, everything else. It's a little bit of wonky stuff going up here on the top. So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that, yeah, it looks like we missed a little bit in our masking. So if we look up here, oops, go to undo, undo that. If we drag our image up, you can see we missed some of the hair. So let's fill that in. No big deal. Perfect. And once that looks good, we'll go ahead and we'll generate another image. We'll try it again. One of the things about the flux in painting, you have sort of two or three different things you're juggling here. So you have not only the, the prompt and the Laura, but you also have the masked area. So getting your mask just right and then having that polished up with having the correct prompt and a good Laura, good quality Laura added, that really makes all the difference. Not bad. That cleaned up that area at the top. We're still not getting quite the resemblance that I'd hoped for. So Let's turn up the strength of the Laura just a little bit, and maybe we'll turn up the strength of the actual in painting just a little bit as well. And you can kind of play around with these settings until you get something that you're happy with. And there we go. That's actually pretty close. I think this is a pretty decent image. He's got a little bit shorter hair than this, but the facial features and structure are pretty spot on. I'm going to go ahead and save this result. And sometimes with this stuff, you have to iterate back and forth a couple times, and that's okay but usually you can get a result that you really like here. And one of the other cool things you can do with in painting is you could take this image and you could try to change out the shirt, change out the attire, the outfit, whatever you want to do. You can sort of replace individual elements within the image as well. So there are some images that I find do better with in painting and some that do better with the image to image method. But between the two, I can typically get a result like this that I'm happy with by using one of those two tools. So I hope you found this really useful. Let me know down below if you have any questions at all. Otherwise, join me in the Discord. We've got over a thousand members over there. We talk about this stuff all the time. Lots of cool tips and tricks that are shared by the community. So hope to see you there. We'll check you out next time. Thank you so much.